Yeah. I've got uh, Art Bergman. I've got uh, Jason Snyder. And we are, because there's a camera involved, because we're, we're zooming, I'm holding up uh, now for public consumption, The Longest Suicide, the authorized biography of Art You're Bergman, not. all fuzzy and shiny and everything. Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Thank you, buddy. Um, with a foreword by Michael Turner. And that's where I'm going to start right now. Hello, Jason. Nice to see you, buddy. Thank you. Great to see you, Terry. Uh, we'll, we'll get to this. I'll, 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 I'll convince my, uh, my internal uh, dialogue in a second. The story of Art Bergman's career is perceived by many to be a succession of failures. But the story of Art's life, question mark, if Art doesn't have the best story, it's always the most magical. Michael Turner, February 2022. I never saw it ever as a series of failures. I saw the failure uh, to be in us to not perceive what you were laying down. That was that's me, and I'm uh, uh, after doing. Are you, are you are you confessing? Yes, I am confessing. God damn! And I'll tell you this: I've done <laughs> I've done a lot of interviews in my time, but this one this one has caused me to uh, to uh, uh, confess to myself that the story's too big for me to do in a 30 minute interview, but I'm going to try my best. That's all I'm going to try to do. And thank you, Jason, for spending your life and time to put this, uh, uh, these words on paper and let us read them. You know, uh, tell me who pitched who did art pitch you or did you pitch art? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, the way it all kind of got started was um, I had been, working as uh, arts publicist for the past six or so years. And um, uh, Phil uh, Cligo, who runs Arts Label, we work, he actually um, planted the uh, the seed with me about writing, writing a book. And um, yeah, I thought, well, why not? It's to me, it's the greatest rock and roll story never told up until now. So, um, I pitched it to Art. We started having regular conversations, just talking about his life. And um, then I sort of went from there and started contacting people who've known him, work with him. And um, yeah, over the course of maybe about three or four years, it all kind of came together. So, yeah. And how much of the story did you actually know, Jason? Um, well, I knew a fair bit. Um, I'd actually written about art in my uh the first book I did have not been the same um that well that was that was when we we first met when uh that would have been like in the mid 90s 1996 or so when art was living in Toronto so um yeah it was uh yeah I guess you could say it kind of dates back to then when uh when I kind of got started on it okay uh did you have to uh, uh... Uh, pry him open with a can opener or was he did he spill it out <laughs> no no he was he he was good but um but the reason the reason I kind of decided um well people will know right away when they when they open the book that um I decided to keep arts quotations separate from the main yeah. text just because um you know I feel like the way the way he he he, he speaks is unlike anyone else I've ever met in my life. So I wanted to really kind of convey his, his voice as accurately um, as, as I could. Hey, Art. Hey, there's, there's a, there's, there's a certain strength in, in living a life, the ups and downs, the ins and outs, but then talking about that life, revealing that life uh, sometimes can, can throw people for a loop. How were you with the, uh, the reveals? Uh, I'm always willing to tell the truth, as anybody who's listened to my songs closely knows. So, uh, a book, yeah, the, the, the truth of the stories is actually stranger than the gossip, uh, gossipy stories about me that aren't true. How much did you forget? I forget nothing. No, come on. Uh, it's no, all here in my little black book. <laughs> Did you write everything down? Who me? Yeah, well, I Why? mean, what? 
I mean, as a journal, no, I write, I, I, when I write a song, I write uh, sometimes pages and pages of what happened, conversations, and it gets condensed and edited down into a song. So when the song is played or, or I recall it, that I, I remember the story of the construction of that song. So I, I have a really accurate memory of what happened, when and where. There, uh, just I've had moments here. Uh... Even in the blackouts. Recently, recently, where I'm looking at a photo and I'm in the photo, but I can't remember being in the photo or being with, for example, Joni freaking Mitchell. How could I possibly not remember being in the same room and doing an interview with Joni Mitchell? How how do you forget? You, you were a sexist back then. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Listen, all I'm saying is, were there moments uh, in in recounting this uh, with Jason? Did you remember things you'd forgotten about? I'm sure I did. I, I haven't read the book for over a year. I, okay. I couldn't read it after uh, uh, right after Sherry's death was the final edit, and I couldn't read. Uh, I couldn't be bothered. I couldn't not do it then. So, um, what was the question? The question was: Did you remember things that you'd forgotten? Uh, I'm pretty good at, at uh, having things suggested and then coming up with a story. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, yeah, sir. Um, Jason, what part of the story? Because there's there's a connection of stories. There's just this is his whole freaking life here. Where where is the through line? Is it the music? Is it the man? Is it the world he created around him? Where is, if you follow one thread, can you follow it through to the end? The art. Um, well, yeah, no, I think it definitely is the music because, you know, as Art just said, you know, it's all about telling the truth and that's what he's done, you know, f uh, you know, ever since he started writing songs and, and, you know, there, there, there are, there are quotes that, that I found actually from past interviews that he did talking about how songs, you know, would, would be always come from real life, you know, events and, and people he knew and conversations. And, uh, so yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah the through line is always, uh, you know, going, digging down as, as far as possible to get to the truth. And that's, yeah, that's the heart of the story, I think. Art? What did he say? Is <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. Jason, I'll share this with you. Sure. Um, I, I was, my, my world was involved in much music and, and not art's world. I was having, you know, I'm, the stations that I was working for were not going to play Art Bergman, but I loved what he was doing, and I was fascinated by the man. And so I finally went to do an interview with Art, and I went down this back alley and down a, a set of stairs. I can remember it like yesterday, and he's in a dressing room that's meant for strippers. There's stripper stuff. There's there's underwear all over the place. I mean, he's going to be playing, but this is his Where dressing is this? room. But never mind. <laughs> and and when I finished this conversation, as I'm walking up the stairs, I'm saying to myself, I don't know how he can survive this. I was fearful for his life. And this was years ago. This was a young Art Berkman. And so my question to Art, and I, this is probably the third, second or third time I've asked you this, Art. How did you survive? Being surrounded by women in a dressing room? No, yeah. just just your life, the the the, the <laughs> gigs, you, the the places you put yourself in. Mm -hmm. How did you? Do you know? Been tough, 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 tough. <laughs> mm. uh, uh, I just wanted to play music. I would go through hell and high water to 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 play my songs. I'd play anywhere because he, like, uh, look how we started in Vancouver. We had to open up, get. The smell and Buddha to hire original bands because there was nowhere for them to play. Yeah, and same deal. Like uh, Hastings and Maine it was a brutal environment; it still is. But um, the clubs that were available in those days were uh, 
hardcore low end uh, dives, shall we say? And yes, yes, that's was that was your world. That's what I remember. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was worried about you then. I don't worry about you anymore. I think you've survived yourself. Mm. Survived a lot. Um, I got. I got to tell you, Jason. This is a great. This is a great read. This is just. This is a turmoil in a jar, and it's every page of thinking. Uh, how close is he going to come to shortchanging the end of his life? Uh, and and well, uh, I think it's a celebration that he's here. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well. Well. Yeah. Thank you again, Terry. Um, well, I mean, the great thing when I, you know, when I was first laying out the book, it did feel like, you know, there were distinct chapters in Art's life, and that sort of made it easy to kind of plan it. Um, but uh, yeah. Well, I think Art. I think you. You. You might have said to me at one point too that you felt like every five years or so you'd kind of cycle through you know people and friends and collaborators and uh yeah i guess that 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 sort of played into how i kind of structured the book as well hey art hey were there times when you didn't feel at all welcome anywhere in the music business yeah i quit for 10 years remember Yep. 2000 to 2009, yep. 10. Yep. I would say the odd show, but um, after the 90s, uh, well, I think the, 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 what's the word, the crux or the cracker, shall we say, that uh, informed me most was receiving a Juno for an album from a record company that dumped me on the same day. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, I kept playing through '99, put out Design Flaw, and then uh, uh, I didn't lose interest. I just, uh, uh, I, I just said this is too fucking hard. Sure. And moved to Alberta. Of course. For other and, reasons. And a completely different. I yes. Well, that was personal. That was family. That was. Yeah. Those were decisions that were literally made for you because they're part of your blood. It's as simple as that. You know, we're talking children, grandchildren, and and that. And yeah. you found your way. You found your way. Did music come and find you? I think that the push was Phil. Phil, that we were. Uh, well, he asked the Great Lakes swimmer singer Tony yeah. uh, what he wanted for his birthday, and he was Tony was a fan of mine and asked asked if I could come to Toronto and. Play it, play it, play a show with him yeah. for for a birthday present, and uh, that got me uh, got me writing again. Nice. Mm -hmm. And that, I mean, the, the, the Decker did a great thing that he did really did. He was a big fan yeah. of your music, and when he when when someone you know when they gave him the opportunity to who do you want on this stage with you, he he suggested you, and um, mm -hmm. and it made sense to him then. It was somebody showed faith in you. Somebody showed a, a character to step forward and say, yeah, Art Bergman, that's the guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, and I think that's that's a, that was another common thread with the book, too, that, um, you know, everybody that that I interviewed. Um, exactly. You know, I've said this before, but everyone that I interviewed had nothing but, you know, the highest praise and love for art and uh to be honest, that kind of surprised me. <laughs> you know, I was expecting that surprises to... me too. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting at least a couple people to say some some negative stuff, but but no, it was uh so I mean, you know, I yeah, I think you know the music it 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 it's it's touched a lot of people's lives, there's no doubt about it, and and it 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 still does, you know. We look at the people right now who are, who are, um, you know, doing everything they can to make sure that art keeps making music. Um, it's it's because they want to hear it. They want to they want to hear his voice. Arthur, well, uh, you you talk to the right people. You didn't <laughs> talk to the people I rip, had to rip off when I was homeless. 
True. I mean, uh, homeless if you find the touch and go down there, you know, it's uh, you do what you have to do. Did you give any thought, uh, Art, uh, over the years to go back and re-record the entire catalog or go back to so those early albums and find a, a, a gem or two in there? They're all gems. Yeah, but, I, uh, I wouldn't re-record Trial with me, but because the demos that we made for that album blow that album away. So uh, I wouldn't re-record anything. It's, uh, 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 it's not my philosophy. Okay. Yeah, but the philosophy changes. I can, I can never get, there's no guarantee that what you say today will be applicable tomorrow. By the time I run this thing, you could have changed your mind completely. Regarding what? Which? Everything. <laughs> well, the truth is in the present. The past is. No, no, give me that stuff. Come on. Well, well what do you want to know? <laughs> what I want to know is, um, uh, <laughs> going forward. Would, yes. Would you go back and revisit some of those songs, or just keep because? I don't need to. I'm busy writing new songs. Okay. Let me see. What do you got? Oh my God! I have many, half a new half a new album. Written. How many of those books have you got? Uh, well, after Sherry died, I filled about six of them. But uh, this last one's in the got um, 30 pages of uh, lyrics and so that's that when you start to record and you start to do your songs you go back to the book for the for the lyrics and sometimes you combine a song from page one and song from page nine together into one song um no i work on one song until it's done so hence this in here look at all that gibberish got turned into five beautiful verses here Nice. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, did you did you go through those books, Jason? Did you look at his lyrics? Um, no, not, not those specifically. But um, you know, luckily, uh, you know, there's some people on 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 Team Art. We like to call ourselves who've uh, you know preserved um, all of his lyrics. Uh, they're online, so you know that was a good reference point for me. Um, this is in the last uh, couple of weeks, so he wouldn't have had a chance to see that. Are you just yeah. is, is this a, is this a complete regenerate regenerative thing? Are you writing yeah. every day? Yes, I've written a song a day in the last three days, and uh, it's called Revivification. Thank you. Can you say it? No, Jason. <laughs> uh, Jason. Uh, Tell me about the interest in art now. I mean, you've, you've watched these over the years. You, and sometimes you've had to explain to a new generation who Art Bergman was. What's happened since, well, since everything, since he started to re-record, re -rec started to record again, and now the book uh, and the Order of Canada? Uh, well, yeah, no, I can definitely see, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been a slow build but you know art's last two records um the apostate and uh late stage empire dementia they were both long listed for the players prize which was fantastic um i think you know now with the book coming out i'm i'm hoping that'll you know reach some some younger people and then with art working on new material um yeah i'm really excited to see how things sort of play out next year um yeah, and Art, you know, he's he said that he wants to uh, get back doing some shows again. Um, so yeah, I think you know, I think now the time is 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 perfectly right for uh, for people to be uh, discovering him. Hey, Art, uh, actually, uh, Jason touches on something there. Uh, a new audience. Uh, do you do you, do you have the energy, the drive, the will to go and find a new audience, or do you want to play the to the people what what brought you? I'll be out there in a punk wheelchair if I have to play a game. <laughs> yes, but the audience itself. Uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Jim Cuddy just a couple of days ago, and they're at Mariposa, and he's on stage with Gordon Lightfoot, and he, but he's looking down at the front row, and the front row is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 25, maybe 30 at the foot, and he's, and he's it, it got him to thinking about, well, who's this audience, and do they know who the hell I am? 
The kids of his fans. Yeah. The kids of my fans are, come to my shows regularly. But actually, basically, basically, he said the same thing. He said they grew up in uh, in households with music, real music, and so that's mm-hmm. what you're seeing in this next generation. Yes, 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 yes. Please. Yeah. Right. Well, I think the message. I mean, the message in all of Art's songs right now are are you know completely in 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 touch with you know things that are happening in in, in the world, and I think that's. You know, I think that's going to be the key to whether, you know, younger people kind of catch on to what he's saying. I mean, the last album was, uh, I, you know, it to me, I, I was I was blown away the first time I heard it, you know. And of course, you know, there's a song on there, uh, Christo Fascist, that, you know, could have been the anthem of the last couple of years, you know, just with all the turmoil and going on in america i mean it captured it better than any american songwriter i could think of it it captured the dread is what it did yes yeah um i gotta ask you a couple of things art yeah i um as, as i wrote uh in march i can't imagine a life without sherry um uh, can you just tell people who are just discovering who you are and what you do and the words that you write and the songs you sing, what she brought to those words and lyrics. Yeah. I hope this is the last part of the interview because um, it's been the last 30 years. She's in all the music, right? She encouraged, crit- critiqued, and gave lyrics. Uh, she's half of the, half of, the, of the, every song I've written in the last thirty years. Yep. And we didn't talk about it yesterday, so I hope this comes up in every interview. But uh, here she is. Ah. Oh man. Miss her every second. Um, I'm just looking at this last pa- this uh, page, Jason. Uh, page 139, it's got a great shot, Alex Waterhouse Hayward a shot of Art and Sherry. Yeah. And you uh, down the bottom it says, yes, to many Art Bergman is a legend, although by its strictest definition, a legend cannot exist in the present tense. As long as he remains capable of facing a new day, the present for Art is, and always will be, tense. Yeah, that was, um... oh, That's sorry. That's the best line, man. <laughs> Thank you. Go ahead, Jay. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, you know, any author can say that, you know, the hardest part of writing a book is that, you know, coming up with, you know, the last line. And um, yeah, I, I, I really struggled over that. And, um, you know, obviously with, with Sherry's passing, you know, I had to, go back and revisit the ending of the book um and yeah and and that was it was it, it was tough and and you know i really i'm 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 grateful to art for bearing with me and uh offering you know great support in in what i was trying to to capture right at the end and um yeah through uh through some struggle i i i think i managed to do it and uh thanks mm. For, for pointing it out. Thank you. Okay. Um, it wasn't the last question, Art. Um, I've been f- f- trying to follow you, your, yeah, I think it's Instagram. I can't, you know, it's just, there's too many uh, stories going by by a lot of people, but uh, you you came back to the West Coast. Uh, do you intend to move here? Are you going to, are you going to be part of our, our lives again over here? Uh, I came back for, uh, we had a big, big gathering for Sherry on the West Coast because, yep. That's where we decided to have it at my brother's place. But uh, I'm in sex right now. I'm still in the farmhouse in Alberta. And uh, slowly, slowly, perhaps I'll get there. But uh, my, my headquarters is still here, but I have units working for me all over the country. Did you like being back here? Did you, you bump in elbows with friends that you hadn't seen in a while? 
Oh, are you kidding? Uh, uh, it was it was glorious, glorious to see everyone again and and get their uh, get their arms around me. Physical proximity to love is uh, is there's no uh, substitute. And here's a serious uh, question. I always ask you this: How is your health? How are you doing? I'm in transition now from uh, an intense day of being completely clean and sober after a lifetime of opiates and alcohol. So uh, uh, it's uh, improving. I'm going to get start swimming soon so I can play guitar on stage again. Okay. I like the fact, uh, Jason, that you in the book you talk about uh, 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 Joe Keithley becoming a, a counselor in Burnaby, and Art speaking to politics and 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 getting the Order of Canada, and how how perhaps one of the great offsprings of the whole punk movement is now showing itself in in a counterculture voice, uh, raising issues and shining light on crappy people. Well, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think that's you know, that's the responsibility of of my generation at this point. I think you know, I'm 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 Gen X, and uh, you know, we're starting to see, you know, some some progress. Be I mean, you know, you look at a guy like uh, um, Beto O'Rourke in Texas. I mean, he came up through uh, through punk rock. Um, you know, he's he's been trying to apply that those those beliefs to you know what he's trying to do down there um you know we're starting to see that more here here in, in canada obviously we had chuck angus and andrew cash in 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 parliament so yeah i think um you know we you know we just got to keep um keep keep fighting it and uh you know there there are people out there doing some great work what do you think Art? keep fighting yeah, i think uh the children of the world and extinction and the children of Kali will start a guerrilla movement to finally stop these polluters once and for all. It will, it will be a, it will be a exciting few decades coming if we don't fly ourselves first. Okay, I think I know where the last question is. Um, um, Beto O'Rourke, as a matter of fact, is in the documentary being shot about Joe Keithley and his political career, which leads me to the question, where's the documentary on Art Bergman? Next. Uh, a couple of fellows were starting on it and came out here. Alan Zweig, I don't know if you've seen his uh, docs on uh, on record collecting for, for one subject, a, a pretty amazing filmmaker. But he was out here, uh, wanted to get started on the, on the doc on me so i have hopefully that will be finished within my lifetime <laughs> yeah that was yeah that was sort of what i was kind of told to yeah alan alan's why yeah he's 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 well known in in toronto and in, in ontario he's got a very distinct style with how he works though so um, I don't think he's going to do anything based on the book. <laughs> you know, he really likes to get get personal with his subjects. So, uh, you know, hopefully they'll that that will happen. But, you know, something I've always wanted to do as well is uh, put together a real comprehensive, you know, overview of art's work, um, whether, you know, it'll be a box set or something or you know, if those if those still exist, <laughs> but uh, that's that's something that that I I really would like to do at some point. Mm -hmm. I have a wish list, and that is that um, that filmmakers start to realize that you would be great soundtrack material going forward. Uh, even going back to the to the early tunes, I just think visually your music moves a, a, a film along, whether it's a a short film or a documentary or whatever. It's your music would work well with film. I'm just saying that, but. But what's next? All those words on paper are fine for you. When do we get to hear the songs? Where's the next album coming from? Well, we're doing a... The money search is beginning as we speak. So and hopefully I, I will be recording by early spring or late. Yeah, early spring, March. And you have an album by summertime. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll hold you to it. Okay. Um, okay. No, you, no, but more importantly, God, take care of your body and your mind and your those around you because we love you. We love you. I'm telling you. I'm trying to tell you we love you. Yeah, uh, I'm here for a couple more decades. Don't worry. The last one standing. Yep. The Jerry Lee Lewis of Canadian music right here. Can you, believe, not a baby. can you believe that Jerry Lee was the last one standing of that bunch as hard as he lived his life? Ridiculous. Well, fuck him. Here's <laughs> <laughs> my huge order of Canada pins. <laughs> no, I like Jerry Lee. He never got that. Never. Thank you, man. I thank you both for doing this. And thank you for this read. It kept me up nights. Scared the hell out of me. Why? There by the grace of God go I. That's it. Oh, uh, thank you, grace. Jerry. There by grace go I. <laughs> thank you, boys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Music. Okay. We'll Love talk you. to you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Love you, too.